Welcome, friends, to Inside Voice. Today's guest is a fun one. She's my friend, Carrie Oles. <laughs> and Carrie, I just want to welcome you to Inside Voice. You were actually going to be here in the studio, but the, the, the storm and the weather in Dallas just didn't let yes. that happen. So <laughs> No. Dallas um, was mad. It said, no, you cannot go. Yes. So I, so I didn't glad. get to come. I'm so glad you're here, though. We made it happen. Well, I'm so glad. <laughs> thank you for so much for having me. You are amazing. Oh, thank you. Likewise. Well, I want to talk about your story today, and I'd love for you to, uh, you have a ministry called Unlocked, and uh, it's, yes. it's just such an appropriate name. Um, having been through so much in your personal life, I'd love for you to mm -hmm. share with our audience today about your background and your upbringing, some of the things that you've been through that, and the things God had to really unlock you from and, and heal you from. Uh, where did things start? You know, I just, I grew up in a family uh, dynamic where we didn't talk about Jesus. I didn't know God. I, I didn't know anything. And I was sexually abused at six years old and that went on for many years. And, but if you looked at our family, you thought we were like really normal people, whatever right. that is, but mm -hmm. that's what you would have thought of us. I had three older brothers and our family just seemed really normal until I was around 11 years old. Mm -hmm. And even though I was being sexually abused, again, I thought that was just how people loved you. Right. And um, when I was 11, my brother was killed by a drunk driver on Christmas. Mm -hmm. oh. And it was the first time I heard about God, though, was at his funeral afterwards. Mm -hmm. And there was, you know, a man in a suit presiding over the funeral. And he was saying, God is a good God. But mm -hmm. I can just remember in my 11-year-old brain thinking, if this is what God does, mm -hmm. I don't think I'm interested. Mm -hmm. And then I think that's the mentality of my whole family because from there, my family just began to fall apart. Mm -hmm. My little brother got so involved with drugs and crime. He has been in and out of prison nine times to date. Wow. And my youngest brother joined a cult. So in a really mm -hmm. short matter of time, I lost the three significant men in my life. Mm -hmm. And the fourth was sure to follow, which was my father because he just was lost in just a life of grief, losing his three sons. Oh. And so I think what began to happen is I began to hear the enemy's voice, which sounded very much like my own as yeah. a young adolescent, saying that I just was not worth loving. Mm -hmm. And so you know as well as I do that when you have a hole in your heart, what do you do? You try to fill it. Right. So I began to be <clears throat> promiscuous and uh, by the time I was 26, I was married and divorced twice. And mm -hmm. I was just involved with really emotionally and physically abusive men. I, mm -hmm. I think I somehow thought that my life was just so bad that this is what I actually deserved. And, you know, I just was down a real path of writing my story mm -hmm. um, filled with rejection and abandonment and unworthiness. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I met the man I'm married to now, and we will be married 25 years. Oh, wow. He did something no other, I know, he did something no other man has ever done. And he took one look at me and he said, I really want to date you, but will you go to church with me? And I remember thinking at 29 years old, I have never been in church and that is the last place I want to be, but I really want to go out with you. Mm. So, um, I went to church because I wanted to date my boyfriend, That's but awesome. it was there that I know it was there that I found the love of my life and the lover of my soul. Wow. And at 30 years old, I began to experience real happiness for the first time mm. in life. Wow. What a blessing. I love how yeah. God brings uh, the right connections at the right time and even the mentors that we need. It's interesting as you were talking about the early sexual abuse and, and the traumas yeah. that you had to process at such a young age. Um, it mm. has been sci scientifically proven psychologically that children who deal with sexual trauma and you know other traumas will, uh, they, the lines of what love is, the definition is it's blurred. Those lines get blurred sure. and then we think, well, love does those things and we don't understand love does not do those things. and that isn't right. love. And uh, so it's no. broken people, it's hurting people that hurt other people. 
And we've heard exactly. that we've heard that expression so often. And I think uh, that's really probably would I would assume would be part of your motivation for wanting to help hurting people because you know how can we make a difference in this world and, and begin to intercept, be as Christ to, to step on the scene at, at that intersection Absolutely. and say, let me give you a word of hope. And uh, how, what was the journey like for you to be able to face the pain that was the storm that was inside of you and do it honestly? Uh, what did that look like so that you could heal? Where did you meet Jesus you know, on that level? You know what? It was more of the fact that um, I realized about five years into marriage that, yes, I had met the love of my life, and yes, I had met Jesus, and yes, I became a regular church attender, and I was involved with everything. I was a greeter. I was a, in women's ministry. I did everything. But I also began to realize that I was still malfunctioning in my thoughts and in my feelings and in my actions. Mm -hmm. And that was filtering into every relationship I had. And so Good. it was there I began to hear about, quote, freedom ministry and classes. And I got into counseling and I began to understand that I had some wires that were really like, if you could look at me, if I was an old stereo, I had all these wires sticking out yeah. and none of them had purpose. Mm -hmm. And then as I began to get help and go to classes and counseling and began to really dive into how to get emotionally healed because the only thing I was concentrating on was how to be the spiritual giant. Mm -hmm. But you can't have the spiritual giant without emotional healing. Those two things have to be hand in hand. And so um, it was there that I began to process that um, as I was in all these things, that the wires began to get sort of rewired in me and I began to think better thoughts, which led to feeling better feelings, which you know, then led to doing better things instead of malfunctioning and destructive things that I had always done. Mm. That's powerful. And such an important part of the journey the, in, in the, the formation mm -hmm. process is we're becoming more like Christ. Uh, you know, we often right. think, because we say this, this catchphrase in the church that it was a finished work on the cross and it was a finished work that, that he did. But the work in us is ongoing. It's Not a continual, finished. and it's also a, we, we, we partner with God in, in terms of, yes. we have to move into agreement with him and what his word says to be able to uh, even find the courage really uh, to face some of the, the internal uh, storm, if you will, uh, yes. to be able to address and confront the truths. And there's a, one of my favorite scriptures, Carrie, uh, is in uh, the book of Corinthians, it's in Second Corinthians, I believe the chapter of three, where it says that we, we come before him with our face unveiled and we stand before yes. the mirror of his glory. I'm paraphrasing, mm -hmm. but his glory is the mirror, see, that will uh, reflect back to us the truth of who we are right. in, in his eyes and where we've been. It's all of it, every, everything. And so if we, we can stand there without the mask in total honesty mm -hmm. with God, that's where right. then we begin to see, right, the truth. Yes. And then we are, it says we're transformed from glory to glory. So yes, tell us I about love that process. That I love that because my favorite scripture um, yeah. is 3 John 1, 2. And it says beloved. And I love that it says beloved because... I really began to understand what the true meaning of love was yes. once I started getting rewired in mm. places like it says, I pray that you prosper even as your soul prospers. Yes. And of course, we know that's our mind, our will and our emotions. Mm. And so I began to understand that Jesus didn't just want me to prosper in knowing like all of his, I, that I could recite a bunch of scriptures. Mm. He wanted me to prosper in my emotions in my health, in my body, Amen. mind, and spirit. He wanted me to prosper in all the ways. And so um, that's when things began to really turn around for me because I, I used to think I want to be this perfect Christian and I would see them in church, you know, like the pastor's <laughs> daughter. I would dream yeah. that she had this beautiful life that I didn't. Uh, but what I began to realize is we all have stuff. 
Wh right. Whether you've come from my background or the best background ever, mm -hmm. we have emotional issues that come up. And if we leave them unhealed and undealt with, they're going to keep resurfacing in different mm -hmm. ways and in different seasons and with different relationships and in different times. And we're going to think, wow, I'm never going to change. And yeah. I thought that about myself so many times. Mm -hmm. Like I'm never going to quit being, you know, rejected. I'm never going to quit being mm -hmm. depressed or angry. I'm never going to mm -hmm. fully be 100% loved by mm -hmm. someone. And all those things were lies. And I didn't understand that yeah. I could get help for that and began to understand I can rewire my thinking mm -hmm. and start to get emotional health and healing. Yes. I didn't understand yeah. that until yeah. much counseling and all these good. classes that I went to. So good. And I'm sure that's what you're offering to women today, but I want to pause here and just let this marinate for a moment. Sure. I, I feel like there's somebody that needs to hear that, you know, you're looking at, we, we do this. We look at others and yes. think they're perfect. They have the perfect life. And now we're living in a, an era of social media where we're looking through those windows of what looks like perfection and it's not reality. Every human no. being was born into brokenness. Every human being yes. is flawed. And so yes. we've got to understand that the comparison game is really from the enemy. And the mm -hmm. I, I think, Carrie, this struggle of learning self-love in, in, in not like narcissism, but the kind that says, yes. I love myself for who God created me to be and how right. he created me in a unique way to accept who I am instead of constantly trying to change it. Isn't that, in the next right. minute, tell us how important that is. You know, I think that for so long I wanted to be, if you would have asked me, like when you ask a little girl, what do you want to be when you grow mm -hmm. up? I would have said someone else. Wow, yeah. Um, and that's what I said mm -hmm. to myself throughout my life. I just want to mm -hmm. be her or her or her or her. Mm -hmm. But then I began to discover, wait a minute, mm -hmm. I got to live Carrie's best life. Yeah. So let's start rewriting a story it's filled with hope yeah. and love yeah. and peace. And mm -hmm. that can come from accepting Jesus, but it also can come from now starting to turn all the places in me that were broken mm -hmm. into repaired. Awesome. So. so hold that thought because it is, okay. that is the journey. That is the, the that inward is the journey, journey that Jesus takes us on. And he gives us the yes. courage to be able to transform from glory to glory. Don't go away. Amen. We'll be right back with Carrie Oles. Have you experienced life-altering disappointments on the road of good intentions? Has the pressure to keep a successful image caused you to feel isolated, overwhelmed, and not good enough? Listening to such lies will eventually cause you to become frustrated, lonely, and unfulfilled. There is another voice calling you toward authentic joy and freedom. Discover this truth and arm yourself to effectively win the war on your identity. Brenda Crouch's book, Fight Forward, Reclaim the Real You, is a beautiful depiction of how she overcame sexual abuse, domestic violence, and a victim identity to embracing a life that is thriving. You too can fight the lies and heal the wounds intended to hijack your soul and reach your God-given potential. Here's what people are saying. If you have ever vowed that you will never be hurt again, then this book is for you. It was God's perfect timing for me to read this book. Brenda's advice gave me the freedom to let go and let God mend my heart. It's exactly what I needed. This book is like healing oil to my deepest hurts. I praise God for Brenda's courage to tell her story and help women like me. God created you to win, and it's never too late to change the trajectory of your life. Order a copy for yourself or a friend today and begin your journey of discovery. Available at brendacrouch.com, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, christianbooks.com. Paul and Brenda Crouch here, baby. We have great plans coming yeah, we up. We do. What do we have coming up? 
It's our heart to see that media is done right and that we give God glory for everything. And we just are following the call and we're doing it honest. And uh, we hope that you will catch the vision and ride this wave with us and know Amen. that it, God is going to continue to pour more and more out as we follow in obedience to him. Amen. Go to Brenda's website. There's all kinds of resources there for giving. God bless you. BrendaCrouch.com. Welcome back. We're talking with Carrie Oles of Unlocked Ministries. And Carrie, uh, you just gave us a lot of your backstory. And I know mm -hmm. that God has just done such a work of healing in your own life. And you're such a beautiful fruit of what it looks like to be transformed on the daily. Tell us about what started Unlocked Ministries. Um, where did that inspiration come from? And how was that really a, a fruit of your own healing? Sure. I mean, I, I was just going along in my life being a speaker and an author and I, I was loving it. And uh, I got a call one day, I speak at women's conferences and, and whatnot, but I got a call to speak at a women's prison. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, no way, because I spent my life, like most people spent their life going to church on Sundays, I spent my life going to visit my brother in prison on mm -hmm. Sundays. Wow. So I thought to myself, I'm never going back there. Are you kidding me? And I told the woman on the phone, I really didn't want to go speak in prison. And I'll never forget, this stranger said, well, with your story, I figured that was the exact place you would go speak. Mm -hmm. And I remember just being a little offended, but a little convicted <laughs> at the same time. And I was like, okay, you know what? I'll try it once. So I pulled up to this women's prison and I could not believe it, but it was the very first prison that my brother ever was in, except oh. in the men's unit. Oh my goodness. And I thought, how appropriate of God to take me back to the place where pain first began for me and to literally heal me through this process of going in to speak to these women. And so I spoke to these women. There was like 200 women. And of course, they were all in the same outfit. And um, they were beautiful souls. And I remember this beautiful girl came up to me afterwards and she said, I had my, my other book, um, and she said, will this book make me like you? And I wow. said, what? I, I don't know what you mean by that. And, I, and then it clicked in my head. She meant like this perfect Christian that I had always yeah. searched for as well. Mm -hmm. And exactly. I said, no, I mean, it doesn't have like instructions. It's just my story. And she looked so disappointed because mm -hmm. she said, I get out of here in seven days. And I said, that's fantastic. Oh. And she said, and I just gave my life to Jesus. And I said, that's fantastic. And she just was shaking her head no the whole time. And I said, honey, why are you shaking your head no? And she said, you don't understand. She said, out there, and she pointed beyond the wall. She was like, I don't know how to wow. stop being me. Mm. And so I, yeah. then it clicked in my head. She wanted like this instructional book of how to get through wow. how she was feeling about herself, like I had struggled with my whole life. Mm. And so as I drove home that day, I was like, Lord, I will not have a prison ministry. I will not. <laughs> and um, he was like, well, what if you have a prison mentality ministry, not mm. a prison ministry? Oh, that's good. And I, I remember thinking, wow, God, that's really good. You should be God. And um, <laughs> so that's when... He led me to write my first <laughs> curriculum, which is called Unlock Now, Six Steps to Begin Inner Healing, which is the very tool that now we get to send into prisons, but we are not a prison ministry. Um, because I remember thinking, he just wants some steps. She right. needs some simple right. steps. Right. When you have, when you're at the bottom, there's nowhere to go but up, mm. but you need some steps. Like somebody needs to help you up. Yeah. And you can't just throw a Bible at them and go, read this. They're not yeah. going to do it. And right. so um, that's when I wanted to start like, okay, if I can't send boxes inside mm -hmm. prisons, what if I send boxes full of resources and hope to women coming out of prison? Like when they get to the transitional homes, oh, beautiful. when they get to the halfway houses, when they get to the addiction recovery, they're in transition of beautiful. some kind get to a battered women's shelter, they're in transition of some kind. 
when they're in teen programs mm -hmm. to help them recover from cutting and eating disorders. They're yes. in transition of some kind. So now we send these boxes, it took us years to get these things developed <laughs> exactly how we wanted, oh. but they have our curriculum, Nancy Alcorn's curriculum, and then authors send us books from all around the country. So each home gets a different special third book just as an encouragement story. We have prayer cards in them. We have a story of Plato and a, a Plato uh, container in there just so they can know that they can create a new life from right. here on out. It's never too late. Mm. Um, we have a bracelet that people make. We, we just send them something and the feedback always is, I can't believe people love me enough right. and believe in me enough right. to start with this box. Wow, that's beautiful. Yeah. And you know, we, we all as human beings, we want that quick answer, the quick fix. Uh, that's what gets us into trouble really, but there is no quick fix and there is no, no. Uh, instantaneous transformation. And, and I think that the, the pain that, that screams at us, that, that inner voice that says, I need to be someone else, is really just the, it, it's, it reveals that we have a God-shaped hole and that we need yes. him, the person of Christ, to come and complete and do the healing and walk with us. For anybody today that's watching this program who identifies and, and carries so many people who have been molested or sexually abused when they were little children have this problem you know i had the same problem and for years i yes. i tried to put on this real glamorous image of what i thought was acceptable and lovable but it got me into a lot of trouble and in my relationships yes. and so being authentic means we have to embrace the mess that we really want to reject and understand that jesus said you're enough and he yes. loves us there in our mess. And it is his beauty that comes and imposes upon our mess, in, in our dust, yes. our messiness, and all the struggles that we have no power over, he overcame mm -hmm. for us. That's right. Carrie, you so beautifully express these things through your podcast as well. Tell us about your podcast and some of the guests that you've had on and, and what you're doing with that. Yes, I, I, we love our podcast. It's called Living Unlocked because, of course, we all want to live unlocked from the things that keep us bound. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we have guests on there that deal with mental health. We have great guests like yourself. We have uh, speakers and pastors and, and leaders that can speak into a place. You know, you need a variety of people speaking mm -hmm. into your emotional yes. health. And so... Um, but this podcast goes into all the homes that we service. That way they can hear messages on the regular. Mm -hmm. It's not just, you know, um, they do our curriculum and then um, they can hear the podcast as follow-ups. And we also have online videos that help them as well from the um, website. Uh, and, you know, I love the podcast because I think it gives people practical keys once a week yes. in whatever subject that we talk about that they need to help them unlock the places that they've been struggling in. Because we, we struggle every day. Yes, we do. And that's yes. part of being human. I mean, there's no condemnation Amen. in that. And so yeah. you have, you're giving people the tools to be able to deal with those struggles on a daily basis. Tell us a little bit about somebody whose life has been transformed through your program. Oh, girl, there are so many <laughs> stories, but I, I think my favorite one is about a year ago, we were teaching in this one uh, transitional home. It's a nine month program. They get released from prison and then they go to this transitional home, this one particular one. And we, we have teachers that we have trained to go into all the homes to teach. So it's not just me all the time, mm -hmm. but um, I would happen to be at this one and there was this beautiful woman but she was super quiet and you could tell she had been through a lot of trauma in her life. And that's, you know, we are a, what I was discovered with these women is just like myself, they didn't have great father figures. They were usually sexually abused mm -hmm. and it led them down roads that they never thought they would travel. And that was my whole life. So, um, she was sitting there and I remember teaching something and 
she just looked up. It was like the third week and she hadn't said a word. And she looked up and she said, so you're telling me that the God of the universe loves me in spite of everything I've ever done. Mm -hmm. And to you and I, that is so simple. Mm -hmm. But isn't that the gospel? It is mm -hmm. simple, it but is. we sometimes mm -hmm. make it so complicated. And I said, mm -hmm. yes, that's exactly what I'm telling you. And mm -hmm. I remember just watching her countenance completely change from dejected, right. rejected, oppressed, mm -hmm. depressed to like she literally sat up straighter and she was like, wow, no one's ever told me that. Mm -hmm. Like the simplest thing that yeah. we could say. Mm -hmm. And, you know, <clears throat> now that transitional home, the recidivism rate, usually that's where people go back and reoffend and then they go back to prison. Usually yeah. recidivism in the country is around 89%. Mm. In this particular home that we have serviced for years, it is down to 14%. Wow. Because what a praise. People, people want to change. They, yeah, they just do. don't know how. That is so good. You know, Carrie, I feel like, and we, we've only got a, a couple minutes here, uh, wow. But I feel like somebody is, is bound by uh, performance, performance, acceptance, mm -hmm. and they just don't know how to receive love. They don't know how to give love. They haven't learned how to love themselves. Uh, minister, mm -hmm. take, take one minute, 60 seconds to minister to that person. Well, whoever you are, whatever you're going through, what I want you to know is this process is a process. And start telling your mind that you keep putting the label of permanent on what something God meant to be a process. Yeah. And so you are not permanently rejected. You are not permanently unloved in this moment. You are not permanently downtrodden. You are not permanently whatever, unpeaceful. Like you right now can start to change your own mind about yourself mm. and just know that it's a process to walk with Jesus. It's a process to get healed in the places that have been hurting. Mm -hmm. And let's pick up the pen and then start asking God to begin to rewrite a new and beautiful story from this point on. It's amen. never too late. Amen, never. amen, amen. Oh, my friend, you're so beautiful. Your story is beautiful because... Jesus has given you life in what once Amen. could have meant a death sentence. And uh, he's, so, he's so merciful, isn't he? It was such he a is. joy, such a joy to have you on today. Thank you for joining me. And, and we'll have to do this again. Well, you're so welcome. And people can go check out our website yes. and they can become a partner with us. We would love that. If you want to sponsor a box and sponsor a woman, we would love that. It's unlockedministries.com. And um, we need all the help we can get, girl. Yeah, so, amen. Thank you I so understand. Much for having me. <laughs> it's an honor to have you. And, friends, it was an honor to have you join us here today in this conversation. Please come again next time because you will be blessed and inspired. This has been a great day on Inside Voice. For now, I'm signing out. Bye bye. Thank you.